The despair of a father begins the world. A single punch thrown into the air for futility's sake at seeing a son be slain before him. And from that punch that births the world, that cracks a hole between time and space and dimension, begins my world. Not. And only three survive. In a world of billions, only three survive. An old rival, another son, and the very woman who, with a gun at her hip, kills the man that ends and begins the universe. And who watches but a little god, a little deity, a Newman, an avatar, an apprentice, a learner, but a novice. And this novice, in the time that her master, that his master is off and other things, he takes these three mortals, these three creatures, and holds on to them, isolates them, and keeps them safe. And from the mass of the universe, he starts to construct and start to build a little project without the knowledge of his master. And first, he spends so much time creating the center, populating it, filling it with worlds that can bear life and bear fruit, filled with seas of all different colors and tints and liquids. With rocks of every single mold of ev and every single metal he could possibly conceive he puts into all these worlds he makes them rich and fat and beautiful and then after populating these worlds after seeding life into them he begins to create other regions he goes to the west and creates whirlwinds Hurricanes of space, solar wind and in infinite flux, onwards and onwards and onwards going with its own currents, with its own shifting tides. And he dots there a couple worlds here and there scattered in between, in between these winds. And then he goes to the east. And in the east, he creates mountains and asteroid fields, and he litters it all with metal. And with rock, and with ever, and with volcanic material, magma here, lava here, and it creates great worms and titanous creatures that go all about shifting in between these asteroid fields and these worlds. And again, he puts some worlds where he seeds a little bit of life. And at this point, he turns to an old friend, an old peasant of sunshine and bad romance, and this peasant starts to grow something fundamental to all this life. He starts to grow souls and starts to bear suns, bear stars. And these stars start to encapsulate all these worlds and all these different territories that the apprentice has made. Thousands, millions, billions of stars of all different colors, from greens to violets to indigos and purples and reds. And they make a sphere that encapsulates all of this. And the apprentice continues to work. And he creates a special place, a hain, a home for nature itself, where he doesn't have to seed any life, but he makes the worlds themselves live where they travel in herds, and they live about as they please. Sadly, the only fault with them is that they produce a lot of fecal matter, which fills the south with an unbearable wasteland, a mist that is impassable. But, at the end of this mist, is a paradise incomparable. And then, before he goes to the north, at the greatest extremities of this vast universe, he puts four worlds, 
to dot the extremities, each with their own unique talents and ongoing, and even a little bit of life seated here and there. And the peasant and the novice continue to work until finally the master notices. And she returns furious, absolutely taken with rage. Because the novice must learn before it creates the world. The novice must learn before it changes and creates. The novice must take a step back and perceive. The master grabs his novice, or her novice, and starts to take him away. And at that very moment, in the speed, in the in the, as much haste as possible, he takes those three poor souls from the old world, from the old universe, and he throws them. He tosses them in, as gently as he can, being a god, so that they, in this new world, may find their way. One goes to the far west, into the deep parts of the west, and the greatest maelstroms there are of solar winds. One falls in the center to cause a lot of havoc. And one goes to the north, in the expanse ever stretching, where the only thing there is the residue of what was left over giant gas worlds and the occasional rock. But on one of those, a couple of them, there is life as well. And she, by mere chance, lands on one of those. And she is there to teach. And in the end, with the master and apprentice gone, and I can only imagine the poor novice how he felt hearing all the complaints of the master, the peasant was left with this charge. And the peasant, focused on other things, grabbed a bunch of seeds, a bunch of souls, a bunch of stars. And, for sheer whim, threw them in. And then went on his merry way. And so begins the world of Noth.